Hey guys, how's it going? It seems like a long time ago, but amidst all the yo-yoing hype at the 2015 World Yo-Yo Contest, I finally caved and I bought myself a Yo-Yo Recreation drop near. Now before you accuse me of buying a $250 yo-yo, I didn't actually buy it at full price. I actually bought a B-grade, which initially had a little bit of vibe, but after I gave it to my friend Vu, he tinkered around with it, changed a couple bearings, and now it plays like an A-grade. So technically, I now have a fully A-graded Dropnir for like, discounted price. Thanks, Vui. So, the Dropnir is Yo-Yo Recreation's premium end throw, okay? So pretty much all the superstars on Yo-Yo Recreation use it. Think Iori Yamaki, Yusuke Otsuka, um, Yakub Dekan, all of them, okay? And just as you'd expect from anything coming from Yo-Yo Recreation, the price is astronomically high at a whopping 250 US dollars for this, okay? For this. Okay, granted, it's a really nice looking yo-yo, but $250, man. Ugh. Anyway, while I was at Worlds, I decided to buy one, and if I was going to blow something near $250, I may as well make a review on it, so boom, here are the specs. Diameter, 57.04 millimeters, width, 43.42 millimeters, gap width. 4.40 millimeters, weight 63.5 grams, bearing size, size C, and response Yo Yo Recreation IR pad. So, the Drop Neo has a bimetal construction <coughs> consisting of a 7075 aluminium body and stainless steel rims on the edge. The version I have is bead blasted on the body. Sometimes they can be like a polished finish, like a metallic polished finish. Mine's bead blasted. And because mine was a B grade, it has no laser engravings whatsoever. That marks it as a B grade, but because Vui tuned it, now it's an A grade. I, I'm, I'm kind of digging this look. It looks like a really premium exclusive edition kind of thing. I don't know. That's all. The drop near has a 4mm axle, uh, comes with a DS bearing and runs IR pads. However, due to Vu's tinkering and tuning, I'm currently running a Crucial 2 bearing in here at the moment. Um, with close inspection, the wall inner walls of the yo-yo, which are really, really small, um, don't actually have the bead blasted finish on them and they actually have a polished finish. I'm guessing this is probably so the yo-yo has extra I don't know, less friction while doing horizontal tricks and just normal tricks in general. That's a pretty nice touch, I think, and it's pretty cool to look at. The drop near weighs in at 63.5 grams, which is by average standards pretty damn light. However, due to the stainless steel weight rims that are placed pretty much to perfection, the drop near glides with an unshakable stability very rarely found in anything of its weight. So in terms of playability, the drop is a pretty angular yo-yo that's mainly designed for um, you know players that really like to push up the speed, um, do a lot of horizontal tricks, a lot of you know angular play stuff like that. But now, okay, every single manufacturer loves to say that you know the weight is right on the rim. You know, it provides super long sleep times, etc., etc. That so many times they've said it, it borders on like yo-yo in cliche, but. The point of it is, is that um, I'm <laughs> the drop near actually does deliver on this, okay? So when you throw it down, you immediately feel the rim weight and it feels like a really light yo-yo, but it also feels like a really stable yo-yo. So with a light and stable yo-yo, pretty much anything's possible. You can do those slow tech type tricks if you wanted to, and you can also do those incredibly angular type tricks if you wanted to as well. In terms of horizontal play, um, I've tried it. Um, it really chews up a lot of my horizontal combos, you know, some of the technical stuff that I like to do horizontally. Chews that up completely fine, no problems. Um, it also chews up any of my speed combos, anything that I like to throw at it, you know, maybe a forward self speed combo, maybe just a normal fast looking combo, you can handle that really well. I mean, this is the stuff that like Yori Yamaki uses, and if you can chew up his stuff, you can probably chew up my stuff just as easily. <sighs> One drawback that I found from the Dropnir is that initially it was very grabby. Seem to have fixed the issue now by using a white and a, lot, a little bit of a thinner string. 
so that you know when I was using normal yellow blueprint string it would snag a lot so it would take a couple of throws to really get it out again after like a, a bind so the binds are really really tight and the yo-yo initially was pretty snaggy um, and if you're doing <laughs> horizontal combos with a snaggy yo-yo that's a death wish you don't want to be doing a horizontal regen with the yo-yo that you're not a hundred percent certain will unleash itself and not ricochet and hit you in the face. So initially I was very conservative with this yo-yo but after I changed the string out and everything it was absolutely fine and I was doing all my horizontal combos with a piece of mind. So my final thoughts about this yo-yo. This is a pretty good yo-yo. It's designed to take a lot of stress so if you've got a lot of um, very stressful horizontal combos, very stressful speed combos, very stressful just Stressful combos in general, the drop mirror is designed to handle it, and I found that a lot of my combos are very easily executed on this yo yo. Um, the one thing that I put out, it's kind of snaggy sometimes. Very, very dangerous at first if you're really trying to put out these extreme type combos. You probably will get hit in the face. I nearly got hit in the face a couple of times. Put a thinner string in it, it should be fine. The other thing is the price. The price is astronomically high. Okay, $250. Who has $250 to buy three drop years to be a competition throw? Not very many people. Maybe the people sponsored by Yo-Yo Recreation. They get it at a discounted price, maybe you get them for free. I don't really know. But, um, does it play like $250? <sighs> now here's the thing, right? There are so many different Yo-Yos out there, so many different buy metals now, so many different other Yo-Yos that Yes, the drop in does play really, really well, but does it play $250 well? I don't think that any yo-yo can really justify that price. Sure, it's got a lot of hype to it, sure it's got the name, sure it's got all the plays using it, but is it worth $250? I will say that it's a good yo-yo. Would I pay the full $250 for it? Again, probably not. That's my opinion of the drop in. Way too expensive. Really good yo-yo, snaggy at first, put it the string on it, and it should be able to handle most combos you throw at it. Cool. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you guys like this, if you guys like reviews, tutorials, comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.